Hello everybody, this video will be on back titration. Back titration is a very specific technique that's part of the broad umbrella term of titration. In back titration, the concentration of an analyte, that is the unknown solution that you're trying to determine the concentration of, this is determined by reacting the substance with an excess amount of a known reagent. And this, it means the standard solution whereby we know its concentration. So we have an unknown amount of analyte that we're trying to determine the quantity of, and we are adding a known amount of a particular reagent in excess, such that some amount is left over. The excess amount of this reagent that we are adding is referred to as a titrand of back titration. And in back titration, the titrand is further reacted with a standard solution via titration, where during this titration, we are trying to use the techniques of proper titration to determine the quantity of the titrand. So from titration, we are trying to figure out the amount of titrand, that is the amount of moles of the reagent that we added that's in excess. And if we know the total amount of reagent that we added in the beginning, we can subtract the amount that was left in excess to find out the amount that reacted with the analyte. And if we know the ratio of reaction, we can then use that number to determine the quantity of the analyte, that is the substance that we're trying to determine the concentration of. So the reason why this is called back titration is because we are still using titration, but rather working backwards to find out the quantity of this unknown substance. Now, many people wonder, why do we use back titration? Well, there are numerous reasons. In general, we use back titration when the direct method of titration, it is not possible, or it will yield inaccurate results. For example, sometimes you might want to determine the quantity of solid forms of metal carbonates, such as calcium carbonates, or even just the purity of metal samples. These will not be possible in normal forms of titration. Another example of whereby normal titration is not possible is in the case where volatile substances, that is, substances that can evaporate very easily, such as ammonia, are being used. In normal titration, if you have a substance that will evaporate very easily, you can imagine you won't be able to yield accurate results as you'll be losing some of the products during the titration. There are some scenarios where you will have a very slow reaction. This means the equivalence point, that is when the right amount of acid or base are reacting together to reach complete neutralization, it will occur before the end point if we use an indicator to determine the equivalence point. For direct titration to be possible and accurate, we want the end point and the equivalence point to happen simultaneously. In some cases, the equivalence point of titration between a weak acid and weak base may be very difficult to analyze due to the lack of a suitable indicator. In these cases, we also like to use back titration. Let's go through a few examples. 1.32 gram sample of impure magnesium was analyzed by allowing it to react with 100 milliliters of 0.75 mole per liter of hydrochloric acid. The remaining solution is titrated with 0.25 mole per liter of sodium hydroxide, and the tighter volume for this titration is 45 milliliters. Assuming the impurities in the magnesium don't react with the acid, what is the percentage by mass of magnesium in the sample? In this example, normal direct titration would not have been possible as the first reaction was between metal magnesium and hydrochloric acid. We couldn't have used any sort of indicators to determine the equivalence point between the two compounds, as magnesium is a metal rather than a base. So what we've got here is we have a sample of magnesium and in which we don't know what the real quantity of magnesium will be, so I'll put a question mark here. And we are adding an excess amount of hydrochloric acid. To be exact, this will be 0.1 liters times by 0.75 mol per liter of hydrochloric acid. And the remaining amount, that is the titrand, is titrated with sodium hydroxide. And the amount of sodium hydroxide that was required was 0.25 mol per liter 
multiplied by 0.045 liters. The reaction here during the titration is hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide produces sodium chloride and water. The number of moles of sodium hydroxide is 0.25 mole per liter multiplied by 0.045 liters. And this yields a value of 0.01125 moles of sodium hydroxide. Since the ratio between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is 1 to 1, the moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted is also the same number of moles. This is just a 1 to 1 ratio. Now remember, only the amount of hydrochloric acid left over, which is called a titrant, was reacted with the sodium hydroxide. So this number here is the excess amount of HCl. How do we determine the original amount that reacted the magnesium? Well, we need to take the initial amount that we added, which is 0 0.1 times 0 0.75. So what does that give us? That gives us 0 0.075 moles. That means the amount of HCl that reacted is equal to the initial amount minus the amount of titrant, which is the amount left over. And this gives me 0.06375 moles. To find out the moles of magnesium from the amount of hydrochloric acid reacted, I need to write a new chemical equation to represent the reaction between magnesium and HCl. And this gives me the salt MgCl2 and hydrogen gas. So the number of moles of magnesium is equal to the moles of HCl that reacted divided by 2. So 0 0.06375 divided by 2, which is 0 0.031875 moles. And because we want to assess the percentage by mass, we want to convert the number of moles of magnesium into mass by multiplying by its molar mass, which is 24.31. And this gives me a mass of 0 0.775 grams. The percentage by mass will then be equal to 0 0.775 divided by the mass of the sample of impure magnesium, which is 1.32 grams, times by 100, and that is 58.7%. And we'll leave this as three significant figures. Let's go through another example. A sample containing my ammonium chloride was warmed with 150 ml of 1 mole per liter of sodium hydroxide. After all the ammonia had been driven off, the excess amount of sodium hydroxide required 50 ml of 0.15 mole per liter sulfuric acid for neutralization. So again, we have an unknown quantity of ammonium chloride to start with, and we are adding the excess amount of standardized sodium hydroxide, which we had. 1 mole per liter times by 0 0.15 liters of, so sodium hydroxide, and the excess, which is a titrant. This amount was determined using titration with 50 ml of 0 0.15 mole per liter of sulfuric acid. Why do we need to use titration for this example? Well, because the ammonia that's being formed is volatile and its quantity that's present in what would have been normal titration would have affected the pH of the solution. Ammonia is a base, so if we had ammonia being converted into a gas, leaving the flask, then the pH of the solution may be higher than what you want it to be. Because the pH depends on the amount of ammonia, which is volatile, any variations in the pH will lead to inaccurate determinations of the equivalence point, and thus, the final quantity of the ammonium chloride. So to work this by titration, we want to find out the amount of titrant. So we want to find out how many moles of sulfuric acid was required for neutralization. So 0 0.15 mole per liter for the concentration multiplied by the volume, which is 50 milliliters. And this is 7.5 times 10 to minus 3 moles. Keep in mind that sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid. So its reaction with sodium hydroxide is not in a one-to-one -one ratio. So it is important to write a balanced chemical equation. We need to put two here in front of sodium hydroxide and two in front of the water. So that tells me the amount of sodium hydroxide that was left in excess, which is the titrant, is equal to 7.5 times 10 to minus 3 times by 2, which is 0 0.015 mole. 
the initial amount of hydroxide is 0.15 mole, which means the amount of sodium hydroxide that ended up reacting with the ammonium chloride is equal to 0.15 minus the leftover amount, which is 0.015. That leaves me 0.135 moles. Ammonium chloride, being an acidic salt, reacts with sodium hydroxide in a one-to-one -one ratio, as shown here. So the moles of ammonium chloride is also equal to 0.135 moles. To find the mass of ammonium chloride, we simply multiply the moles by its molar mass. And this gives me a final answer of 7.22 grams. I'll leave this as three significant figures. And this concludes the video on back titration.